Hi, I am Michael Bean, and uh, this is your MyFreeActingClass.com uh, lesson for Monday, August the 10th. Uh, today, we are going over camera technique, and uh, first, I like to throw in a little new something uh, every time, and uh, for those of you who are not already familiar with it, I want to go over the production, the Creative BC production list. Uh, so we're just going to go over that quickly. Uh, it'll probably take me you know, five minutes. I don't know tons about all these productions. I've put the link into the chat window, uh, and if anybody's watching the video, then you will see that when you look at, here we go. Um, right, so I've highlighted it right here up top, Creative BC uh, production list. And so uh, Creative BC, British Columbia's Creative Industry Catalyst, uh, the, uh, this replaces the, the BC Film Commission, you know, they wanted something that was, I think, more of an umbrella. Um, but it's really one of the best uh, places to go for all this uh, information. Um, so, uh, what we've got here, disclaimer, this list is prepared for information purposes. Uh, production director of the Directors Guild of Canada and the BC District Council, etc., etc., etc. So that's where they're getting the list from, is the Directors Guild of BC. And there, there is another list that is identical to this one or you know, slight differences uh, on the director's skill website. So we can see um, there's features are listed first, Bonfire, Ellington, Untitled Graham King Project. And then we've got a bunch of, uh, we've got a new media feature, Cinderella Story, Starstruck, TV series. Now these are the ones that are, um, I think most exciting, you know, for those of us who are acting and working in uh, Vancouver, because these are the ones that are going to be looking for recurring characters in BC much more than they would. Now, normally for a show like A Million Little Things or Day of the Dead. Now, I don't know if uh, you remember, this is the one that we looked at. Uh, Candice Elzinga is casting it. And this is the one uh, that I showed you the breakdown for a couple of weeks ago, where they said uh, 18 you know, lead recurring characters looking to hire all BC residents. Yeah, so it was the first uh, breakdown that, uh, that I had seen uh, that said that so clearly. Uh, but there's a great opportunity right now for folks in BC to uh, go out for audition for uh, these recurring characters because very often uh, in sort of the pre-COVID times, they would hire the main cast in Los Angeles. You know, and Everybody's got a guess about that. I'll tell you mine, uh, but that doesn't make it canon. You know, every, basically everybody's got guesses, but the, there's no like convention of producers where they're saying, here's why we all make this decision. Um, my best guess you know, uh, about that is that um, if you remember from uh, talking about sort of what producers' priorities are with uh, Tina Peme and then me, uh, Pem rather, and then me going over uh, those details uh, in the, the last couple of weeks, the producers are basically thinking, how can I bring audience in? So they're hiring actors who already have substantial credits. And then I think on just like a simpler and more basic human level, the producers and the production companies are often based out of Los Angeles. Yeah, and so if you or your company are putting an enormous amount of money into something, I think that you probably want to see those actors in person, you know, at least pre-COVID. Now everybody's on tape, so yes, way more democratic. But previous to that, I think a lot of the, the uh, my explanation or my best guess for why sometimes even the small supporting parts in a TV show that was based at its production office based in LA would be cast in LA uh, is because the producers just wanted to see that person in person uh, without having to hop on a plane. Yeah, and that they felt more confident about casting somebody who they'd seen. That's, I think it might be as simple as that. At least that's a part of it. I never hear other people talk about when they're like, here's why this happens. Uh, family Law, one of my students was on this uh, just the other day, they sort of picked, uh, went on hiatus and came back. Now, if you looked at this, oh gosh, what, maybe five weeks ago, each one of these would have said, uh, you know, on hiatus or temporarily suspended, uh, Kung Fu season one, Motherland, Fort Salem, this is uh, one about witches, uh, the, you know, a lot of, um, I think the characters are meant to be in their uh, late teens, you know, but it's one of these kind of slick CW shows, you know, so uh, you're looking at characters who are usually in their, uh, actors who are usually in their 20s. Uh, Resident Alien season one, Riverdale season five, Super Pups season one, Superman and Lois, Supernatural season 15. You know, I think they're just wrapping that up. Uh, the Astronauts, uh, this one, if I'm 
correct. It's a Nickelodeon show. Uh, and so uh, young actors going to space. I mean, the main cast is in a spaceship. So I don't know if there's going to be a lot of uh, you know, the, um, I don't know if there's uh, going to be uh, a lot of um, uh, young people sort of beyond that main cast, at least if it's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, the Big Sky, The Good Doctor. Uh, one of the scripts we're looking at today is from The Good Doctor. Um, now, there was a, a great article uh, that you can find online uh, recently about you new know, production starting again. I think I mentioned the Capriso, Van Helsing, uh, Vampires, definitely not kid friendly. When Calls the Heart, CBC definitely is kid friendly. Uh, Zoe's extraordinary playlist, you know, and so we've got a bunch of new media here, Lost in Space, you know, it's Netflix, uh, right, a lot of the Netflix shows, you know, or Hulu, or those, you know, fall into the, uh, the new media series category, and they'll often do what's called block shooting them, which means that, like, let's say you're in five or six episodes of the show, they'll try and get all five episodes of your shooting done in four days if they can. I mean, I, I imagine that they're doing that especially now, but it's a way for them to save money. And so uh, the, you, know, you can be like, yes, oh my God, I'm in six episodes of this show. And it's like, wait, but they're shooting all of me in three days. Okay, uh, it does happen. Uh, C to C, The Mighty Ducks. I think this is a, a, a Disney uh, online. Yeah, it's uh, about a young, a young people sort of misfits hockey teams. So definitely uh, young actors available in this one, The Power. Uh, I believe, uh, I mean, I've seen some scripts definitely for teens. Um, the, uh, uh, my understanding is that it's about, uh, it's based on a, a book or graphic novel. You know, it's like women across the world suddenly get the ability, uh, develop the ability to like electrocute guys anytime they want to. And so it's this like, what happens you know, when you know, women can't be oppressed? Uh, you know, and it's also sort of a, um, so it's got some like female empowerment stuff. And then of course it's, TV, so it's got you know all sorts of you know polish and love stories. Turner and Hooch, uh, and then here a uh, bunch of these TV movies are coming back. You know, so uh, those of you who are here uh, when Emily was talking, um, you know, this is uh, likely where uh, the the movie that she was on uh, would show up. You know, and some of these are going to show on TV networks. You know, some of them uh, the I imagine are going to show online. Uh, the a lot of these are going to be Hallmark shows. Uh, now you can see that it doesn't, you might have to go to, like to find out if this is a Hallmark show or not, you might have to go to IMDB, internetmoviedatabase.com. Uh, the production company is going to be a production company formed just for the producing of this show, probably. Uh, Chasing Waterfalls, Cranberry Christmas, if only had Christmas, Love at Cedar Creek, and then, and then, and then, Martha's Vineyard Mysteries, number three, Christmas, My Mother's Wedding, Pro in the Mist, Love, Christmas. Are you getting the theme of Christmas? You know, so any, yeah, so uh, people are like, yeah, there's lots of these Christmas movies. There really are lots of Christmas movies. I mean, like we're, you know, on, still in somewhat quarantine, and there are like how many of Christmas, just Christmas movies in the TV list. Uh, so uh, there we go. That's the Creative BC uh, production list. Highly recommend. Uh, just you know, periodically uh, keep an eye on there. You know, and even if you just picked one thing on that list, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna learn about that one production. You know, today or the uh, you would slowly accumulate information about all these shows. That way, you don't have to you know, sort of do it all at once you know, when you get an audition or something. Um, now in LA, it's much more normal to like target specific shows to say, okay, you know what. Um, a million little things casting and like I've watched a little bit of it and I think I'm like really the type they're looking for and so I'm going to you know like make sure I watch the show and stay on top of my agent about it. Um, that's much less common here in Vancouver especially you know with things still fairly slow but I think it is reasonable especially if you are doing research about these shows and you do have a talent agent to say hey you know I know this show is back in, uh, like is uh, back in production you know, because I saw it on the creative BC list you know, and I get the style and I think I'm a good fit for it. Can we try and get me a tape for it? Or can we try and get me in for it? I think that's a completely legitimate thing to say to your agent. And it can be easier um, if you are trying to be strategic uh, and reach out to your agent to target specific shows or specific casting directors than just say, hey, I just want to audition more. Can you send me out for everybody? Yeah, I mean, that's the situation for all actors all the time, you know, and so uh, to give them something concrete can be really helpful. All right, uh, let's look at the two scripts uh, that I've got for you today. So uh, we'll start with 
Uh, oh, okay. Uh, let, let me just take a look at this. We'll, we're going to start with one from uh, a TV movie called Fairly Odd Parents. Uh, you know, this was uh, like a, a sequel, you know, to I think Fairly Odd Christmas. You know, about the Timmy somebody or other who gets magic Christmas powers. I don't really understand. You know, the uh, but there's like there's fairies involved, you know, and magic, and it's like it is very silly. Oh, um, this, the reason I have the script actually is because Michelle, who was teaching the voiceover class on Friday, how was she by the way? Like, yeah, did, did, did she give you some good stuff? Oh, great. I haven't, you know, I think she didn't record it, so I haven't been able to see the video. Oh, I finally updated uh, the myfreeactingclass.com with a link to the video archive. So you no longer have to like follow six things. You can just go to myfreeactingclass.com and be like, I wonder, you know, today I want to watch half an hour of things from some casting director or, you know, stuff about camera technique or like, you know, I've been missing Michael Bean's like strangeness and beard and I just, you know, want to see his face. And there it is along with all of our guests. Um, the, uh, so Michelle auditioned for uh, this character and she was, uh, and she, so this was, would have been what, like 10 years ago or something, you know, um, maybe eight. Uh, and she was the one who like her mom, uh, uh, sent me a message right after the audition and said, yeah, the producers loved it. They thought it was hilarious. It was the first time they'd ever seen it. It was written yesterday. Right, that, that the writer had been working on the script that she used for her audition right up until the Thursday morning. It had gone from the writer to casting. Casting had sent it out. She'd prepared it. She'd gone in and auditioned on Friday. Nobody had ever seen it before the actors came in and started you know, acting it. Like now that's an unusually tight timeline, you know, but just so you're aware of like how just in time the world of film and TV is. It is so just in time. And they're not doing it to mess with actors. They're really doing it, I think, because they are juggling so many things uh, on the production side. You know, uh, is this space available at that time? All the equipment and you know, 50 crew members, you know, that, uh, that that's their, that's the best they can do. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to need some folks to read the script for me. Uh, we've only got a couple of characters. Uh, I need Christmas Carol, who's, who's, a, who's a type A elf. You know, evil you be, Christmas Carol for me. You know, good. So you're, so you're like, you're the boss. Type A means like you're in charge, you're badass. And then I need Missile Tony. You know, um, hey, Maddox, can you do a, like an elf voice for me? You know, the, uh, so uh, Missile Tony is like, he's panicked and he's running into the command center. You know, so Eve and Maddox, you can unmute yourselves and I'll, I'll pull this up. So like a high voice? Oh, I don't know. You just you know, do anything you want. You know, just, just think elf. Uh, because I know Maddox does voiceover and I thought that might be fun. Okay, so back at the North Pole, Interior Elf Command Center. Uh, the NORAD style situation room, Klaxons wail, NASA style elves chugging hot chocolate, bustle around monitors trying to figure out what happened. Christmas Carol bursts in. Listen up, people. We've got a situation. Some dub bug is messing with Santa's list, and I won't rest till his head is on a peppermint stick. Missile Tony, I want a name. A nerdy geek elf, Missile Tony, runs in holding a printout with a familiar face on the page. We know who he is. His name is. Timmy Turner. All the elves furrow their brows. Okay, you know, so so Missile Tony uh, really just has this one line. We know who he is. His name is uh, Timmy Turner, and he he runs in. Um, now I'm not going to do sort of all. So uh, we know who he is. His name is, and then it was all in capital letters. Timmy Turner. Um, there, so that's there's your line. You know, if you're doing your know, missile, Tony, uh, you've got to run in, you know, in a panic because of, like Christmas is being you know, ruined. Now they've given you a big chunk of dialogue. Uh, they've done something that cast directors often do, you know, which is they've pulled this little uh, slip uh, piece for missile, Tony, and I don't know if uh, you saw in the right. So we've got uh, that he runs in, but then you've got all of the stuff that you're listening to before. It's not crossed out. You know, and so uh, the the important thing, I think, uh, if you were prepping this, whether you're taping it or going in for it, is to give yourself some kind of action, like you are trying to figure out who it is, you know, uh, and you're slightly removed from camera, and then you are going to, aha, there it is, you're going to run, and then you're going to run in with it, 
you know, but you'd want the camera seeing you this whole time. You would not want to be off camera for this, even though it says here that you're running. Uh, the, so easy, easy, normal. Uh, if uh, you were curious about what NORAD is, right? And uh, NORAD, so all of NORAD situation room, put into Google. Oh, okay, it's one of these, right? The uh, NORAD, okay, NORAD. Yeah, so it's this, but with like candy canes and Christmas elves. Actually, no, I was really thinking I, I would have, uh, you know, I probably could have like um, Google image, found an image from the actual show. Uh, the, right, so it's called a fairly odd Christmas. If somebody wants to like, you know, find a picture of the like elf situation room for us, just for fun, you know, like go ahead and, and do some like multitasking Googling. Uh, right, so uh, Maddox, uh, do you want to demo first uh, for me first and then we'll let Caden do it? You know, because Caden's like actually elf sized, you know, and, and he, you know, he, he also wants to help. Um, all right, so uh, you're gonna, exactly, you're gonna wanna set the camera up uh, so you can be standing. Uh, and if you have a sheet of paper there, you know, uh, like the it's within grabbing distance, you know, do it. And otherwise, just pretend to have one. It's like it's not that big. Of a deal. <laughs> that, that's really funny. Like, it's like, it's, it was like it just magically appeared. Uh, and yeah, and so um, you can you know, be. I also suggest starting just off to one side. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Good. Um, the uh, you know, and a little bit further in. Right, there you go, yeah, right, so that you're just that like one step back so you can like come up, you know, and then um, are you looking through your list? Are, uh, are you uh, the other, right? And since it's a, a sheet of paper, you probably shouldn't be like poking it, uh, you know, but, um, but you also uh, could be, you know, uh, like if you wanted, you could be looking through different sheets of paper medics, you know, by just using the edge of the frame. So I remember that as any action that happens uh, outside the frame, right? So you can just start with it here. Is that it? No. Uh, is that it? Uh, is that it? Uh, right? Like you can use one sheet of paper, you know, to like search through all of the printouts, you know, in a panic. You know, all the, the only information we've got about you is that you're geeky, you know, and so can you show us geeky in the action choice that you make at the beginning. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes. right, so let's see that. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you uh, the Christmas carols lines. Uh, remember your line is, we know who he is, his name is Timmy Turner. You know, and uh, the, uh, the more you're, you are sort of playing with this joke of like, it's a war movie, I think the, uh, the more you're realizing uh, the humor that they're asking for. This one. Okay, stand by and Action. Listen up, people. We've got a situation. Some dumb bug is messing with Santa's list, and I won't rest till his head is on a peppermint stick. Missile Tony, I want a name. We know who he is. His name's Timmy Turner. <laughs> Cut. Perfect. And then you see, see how Maddox didn't make a choice about what happens afterwards. And of course, he didn't. Like, I'm racing him through it really fast. You know, but know that 90% of people will do exactly that. They'll say the line and then just completely stop. Yeah, and especially when you're doing these one line auditions. Uh, one of the things that's important is to decide what happens after. Like, are you scared of Christmas Carol? You know, are you like, oh, Timmy Turner again? Gah! You know, like the, uh, you want to play with the geekiness. You want to play with like making him as important as possible. Okay, Caden, let's try this. Spotlight. You ready? Okay, uh, practice your line uh, once for me, Caden. Your line is, we know who he is. His name is Timmy Turner. We know who he is. We know who he is. His name is Timmy Turner. Ah, good. You know, and so, uh, can, here's something that's like way different from what Maddox did, but it's sort of more appropriate for your age. Now, uh, for those of you who like know younger actors, or if anybody's watching the video at home, you've got you know, very young actors, the folks who've got their video turned off, well, the reason that casting will bring in somebody who's Caden's age you know, is because they want it to be kind of messy. They want it to be, have that like little kid energy. They don't want it to be perfect and polished or they'd bring in somebody who's a couple of years older, but just very short, you know? Uh, and so, Caden, uh, um, I want you to go just off the, uh, uh, out of frame. Okay, so, uh, so back up and go just out of frame. And so back up towards your couch, okay? Further towards your couch, away from the camera. Do you understand what I'm asking? Go away, move away, there you go, good. And then just off camera. So where the camera can't see you. Just off camera means where the camera cannot see you. You have to back up. 
For, further back, can you not go any further back than that, Katie? No. Okay, great. So what's so on action? Um, well, I say this first line, you know, for action and Carol, you're gonna run back and forth. Going, ha, yeah, ha. You're not gonna yell the whole time, but you, as though you're just frantically looking for the information. And then you're gonna run up to camera and say, we know who he is. His name is Timmy Turner. Okay? Yeah. So go ahead and make sound and run back and forth. You know, stand by and action. Listen up, people. We got a situation. Some dumb bug is messing with Sam's list. Then we'll rest until his head is on a peppermint stick. Mistle Tony, I want a name. We know his name. It's Timmy Turner. Good. And then uh, you gotta go. Oh, Timmy Turner. <gasps> right. So some kind of moment after. Uh, same basic idea. But you can see how like doing something that would be totally ridiculous on you know, like an 11 or 12 year old, like running wildly back and forth across camera, they'd be like, where's your camera technique? That's crazy. How can you don't know what you're doing at all? Um, on somebody Caden's age, it's just fun. Partly because it delights him. You know? And if you're going in for comedy, and I, it's been a while you know, since I did a lesson on uh, specifically on comedy, maybe it's time you know, to do another one of those again. Uh, but uh, Anything that entertains you, you know, uh, is likely to be entertaining for the audience. All right, uh, is anybody else like, oh man, I just really want to be Missile Tony, or shall we move on to the Good Doctor? Oh wait, it is three fifty-three. We're going to move on to the Good Doctor, whether you want to or not. Uh, here we go. Um, so, uh, uh, Deborah, uh, will you be my uh, TSA officer? Okay, and Christina, how's your voice? Deborah, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, I don't have a script for it though. That's okay, uh, Christina, uh, will you be Sean? Okay. Sure. Okay, great. Uh, so here goes. Uh, Interior Airport, TSA, which is uh, Transportation Security Administration Day. Sean has not made a run for it. He's actually at the airport security checkpoint. He walks behind the barrier to where the security personnel work and heads for a large bin. TSA officer, stern. Excuse me, you can't be back here. He grabs Sean. Where do you keep the knives that people forget they're traveling with? I need a knife. Oh, sure, a knife, no problem. Anything else? Fuse wire, plastic explosives? I also need a narrow six foot tube and alcohol baggage handling tape. But I'm going to, okay, I'm going to get the alcohol from the duty free store and the tube from the back of the soda machine. Right, so uh, the, the reason that I, I pulled this, you know, is because he grabs Sean, you know, and so uh, we're just going to do that bit, you know, um, the uh, Monday's the day that we talk you know, about camera technique, you know, for auditions, you know, and we can, um, well, we can come back to the script if you're like really excited about TSA officer. Uh, so it says stern, you know, and uh, your uh, lines, excuse me, you can't be back here, you grab Sean. You know, so uh, Deborah, uh, can uh, can you uh, arrange your camera so that you're standing up? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then Christina, if you want to be our TSA officer, you know, uh, too, so we can show you a different version. Yeah. You know, then. Uh, Cutting off my blue on the angle I'm on. Sorry. Yeah, that's true. Uh, just just know, and I know that I've gone over this lots and lots of times. Um, but if you were setting up to uh, tape at home or do an audition at home, you would want. It would be very important to elevate your camera so that it was at the same level as your eyes. You know, uh, stu the students in my class, you know, are always like, um, "What about now?" And this is like uh, shooting up their nose, and it's like it's just such an unflattering angle. You know, and even just a little bit of shooting up your nose, right? It's not huge, but it's enough to be unflattering, right? So if you, uh, right? So if I, if I'm like, "Well, this is close enough," right? And and the whole point is that like you are, we want to be on television, you know, where you're inviting all of these people to look at you, anything that's kind of unflattering, like for instance, my horrible white balance right now, which I will figure out by next lesson, uh, the, you definitely don't want to send in that tape, right? You definitely don't want that, you know? And so it's really important to have the camera uh, level with, actually level with your eyeballs, you know, so that your face is the shape that it should be and you don't have like sort of a wildly distorted chin or a wildly distorted forehead. Mine wrong um, still. <laughs> there we go. You know, I found something to talk about, and then okay. the was all set up. You need to tip the camera up because we can't see your face. It's fine if we if it cuts off your backdrop. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Good. You know, so um, you're going to want to put the uh, the clipboard down because you're going to need your hands. Okay. You know, uh, so uh, the a reminder that uh, with you know physical action, 
first you try it exactly, you know, uh, the, uh, that, like exactly the way it's written. You know, so um, you have the first line, you know, you are busy doing your job, you're looking uh, to the other side of camera, remember there's two, usually and you want two eye lines, you want both eye lines to be close to camera, just one side to camera, just the other side of the camera, right? So you're gonna turn your body to face the like, you know, people who you're examining, and then Sean who bursts into your area, is gonna be just the other side of camera. You know, uh, you're gonna say, excuse me, you can't be back here, and you're gonna grab him. So do it just exactly the way it says in the script, and don't think about it too much, stand by, yeah, and action. Excuse me, you can't cut, be back here. Cut, cut Deborah. Mm -hmm. Remember, so you've got the people you're looking at on one side of the camera, okay. and then Sean's gonna burst in on the other side on of the, the camera. On the other side, so okay. And the reason you do that is so your eyes go from okay, one side of the screen to the other side of the screen, so they're really clear to be two different relationships and two different people. Okay. Okay, uh, your eye line for the uh, line. So I'm not gonna uh, give her grief for her eye line being too far off camera because it's just her moment before. If she had to interact with the people, then I would encourage her to bring her eye line closer to camera. It's not that vital if she's just starting out. Uh, Deborah, thank you for being brave and being my demo. Uh, what's the line again? <laughs> the line is, excuse me, you can't be back here. Okay. And take your time to see him bust in first. Okay. You just start the line, then you're doing what 90% of actors do, which is they're just starting the lines when they say action. You want to give us the life first. Stand by and action. What are you doing? You're not allowed to be back here. Uh, the line is, excuse me, you can't oh. be back here. And you're an oh. officer oh. of the law. You're not, you're, you're not like, nah. Um, like you've got to, you know, so stand okay. up straight. You know, uh, okay. Exactly. Stand by and action. What are you doing here? You're not allowed to be back here. Right. You know, the, and so per perfect example, you know, and Deborah, again, like, thank you for you know, being brave, but the, because Deborah's doing multiple things, right? She's standing, she's getting a new line, she's you know, internalizing a new skill, she's practicing. She also has people looking at her, which you know, she probably you know, doesn't have a ton of practice with. Um, even though I told her exactly what the line was, she still didn't remember it. You know, this is why in auditions, uh, when, you, when, when you, of course it's fine. I'm just pointing it out to everybody else because everybody else noticed it. You know, and so just to, not to like, um, I want to point out how normal that is. That like, it's always easy to hear everything and remember everything when you're not the one who's on the spot. Yeah, you know, and the reason that you do this practice is because initially your brain's going to shut down like that. You know, and uh, you're going to need to practice a couple of times. Okay, so the so you saw that that was Deborah just like lunging for the guy, and it was very unclear on camera. But she did exactly what I asked. Her. So how would I you know, do that? Now, now I want uh, is somebody else willing to demo this one for me? You know, Christine, uh, can you set this up? Kate, you, you already had your practice. I know you're always keen. I, you know, uh, the uh, what about you? Uh, you know, like Elaine or Kevin? You, you uh, Kevin, you'd make a, a great you know uh, like stern security guard. You know, uh, if you want to uh, help me out. Okay, so want me to just sit now? <laughs> yeah, uh, good. You know, so um, we'll start with Christina. Okay, so do you remember about grabbing your own hand? Well, I guess. Exactly. So remember, so you're going to start by looking at the people on one side of the camera. So there's those are the people in line, and then the guy who busts in is going to be just the other side of the camera. So show me the eye line for your lineup. Yep, and turn your body to face them. Turn your shoulders to face them. Good, and then he comes in exactly, and then reach forward, uh, make sure the camera can't see your hand, and grab your own wrist and pull on it. Just like this? Yeah, right? So not like, you know, I'm praying. You know, what you wanna do is like grab, right? So put your own, what I'm doing is I'm putting my arm up and grabbing, right? So I'm just like, come here, right? Hey, you can't be back here. You know, and you wanna be a little closer to the camera so that we can't see that you're grabbing your own arm. But I'll just give you resistance, and you don't have to go as far. Right, so that uh, means you'll actually be able to pull on something. If you do it while you say the line, it will affect the line in a way that will make the line more interesting. So, right, first we did exactly what was written. Now we're trying it outside of the frame to see if that works. Stand by. Okay, so lines, excuse me, you can't be back. Excuse you can't me, be back. You can't be back here. It says, it specifically says stern. You know, so. And then you pull him after you say the line. You grab him, you don't pull him anywhere. Okay. Stand by. No, um, no um, what I'm suggesting is that you, it, uh, in the script, it will always give you, uh, you know, line and then action, because that's the way scripts have to be written. Mm -hmm. you know, but as an actor, you very often are better off overlapping them. But if you say the line while you grab him, you know, it will make it sound more stern without you having to work at it. Does that make sense? Stand by. 
you know, look at the line, look at the line, turn your shoulders to face the line. So we just see you're at work. You're not expecting somebody to bust in on you. Stand by and action. Excuse me, you can't be back here. Cut. Right, and you know, the, uh, good. You know, and then Kevin, uh, let's spotlight you and get you the same thing. You know, now, if we wanted to go even further you know, with uh, the, uh, like showing that you are like stern and serious at your job, you know, then, uh, then take a second and really disapprove of whoever's on the other side of the camera. Like whoever's just walked past you, just really give me a like, that like they're, they're sketchy, they're troubled. Now, are you standing? Because we're gonna need you standing for this. Yeah, I'm kind of, my laptop's kind of sitting here, so. Okay, good. No, I, I just wasn't, uh, I just wasn't sure. Is it okay if I'm sitting? No, because you're a security agent, you've got to grab somebody. You know, it's fine if it's shooting up your nose. The, oh, I see you, like your laptop is on your lap. I'm, at, I'm on my, like, my Oh, work. no, okay, oh, I'm sorry, Kevin, you're like the. All right, now we get, now we get right. whited out here. Right That's now, I'm standing. You know, so, uh, so uh, put the, the people on the other side of the camera. Uh, okay. right, so you've on one side, show me where the lineup of people is. Uh, they'll be over there. Right, so, um, but closer to the camera, so turn to face them. Yeah. You turn your shoulders to face them. Yeah, exactly, right? You can even cross your arms over your chest, right? Like you like really show me, see? And because of the way his, uh, we see his biceps when he does that, you know, like now he looks even tougher without him having to do any work, right? You know, the, uh, uh, and so uh, you're going to turn, you're going to say the excuse me, as though you're saying, what the hell are you doing? You know, yeah. and then you're going to reach forward and, uh, and grab the guy, you know, as though uh, he's going to resist, right? Just, yeah. make, just be the boss. Um, what's, what's my line again? Excuse me. <laughs> See, isn't that validating, Deborah? Everybody else had to ask for it too. You're right. It's not you. It's everybody. I was listening. I saw the line. Of course, I, just, like, I know. I know. But then like you get other, like that, that's why we practice, right? Because once you get into the room, you're going to be like, I, I had this in the hallway, but then they're going to ask four more things from you in the room. You're going to be like, oh my God, short term memory is full. The line I was is, watching. The, the line is, excuse me, you can't be back here. Okay. Good. So looking at the line, stand by and action. Excuse me, you can't uh, be back oh, here. So, uh, cut. So it's, it's really important you know, to start with the line, have an opinion about them, then see him on the other side of camera. So it's really clear. We've got the line. Over there. And we've got the, yeah, right. Both islands are close to camera, but two different people, two different relationships. Okay, so start with the line. Yeah. Stand by and action. Excuse me, you can't be back here. Right. <sighs> Again, exactly. Yeah, and then if it was going to, um, if it was going to keep going, you just want to make sure you would kept hold of him. Kept hold, yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, so that the uh, so that we see that um, that you're going to do violence to this guy so, because the, he's autistic and he's like, "Hi, I need a knife." And you're like, "Yeah, explosives or whatever." Like the, he doesn't get yeah. the sarcasm at all. You know, and so the uh, the threat of violence. You know, now. This takes us into that idea of film and TV casting because Kevin is larger, you know, uh, than the other people who demoed. He just looks more threatening on camera. Like he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to like you know try and make threatening faces. He doesn't have to like get in a threatening frame of mind before he goes. He just is physically larger, and so he's going to be more intimidating. Where some if somebody like Deborah does uh, does this, and maybe they call somebody like Deborah in. Deborah's going to really have to put on you know, her uh, like top school teacher, right? Like she, she's gonna have to, you know, find something that's really honest for the authority because her look is not doing the work. And sometimes they want that. Well, that's gonna be really interesting. So Deborah's gonna have to do a little bit more acting work than Kevin is or something like this. Um, all right, uh, que uh, questions, comments, anything about the good doctor that is in any way confusing? No, we're in good shape. Cool, uh, well, I am teaching tomorrow and then Liz, uh, I'm real, She's got the technology figured out, and uh, she's going to be here on Wednesday. Uh, the, uh, still figuring out you know, Thursday and Friday. I'm hoping Michelle will come back and do more voiceover, uh, and, and then I'll get a couple of people. You know, uh, remember, my email is right in here, info at myfreeactingclass.com. If you're like, yeah, I could do that. I could you know, come and you know, bring a mask and you know, try a little four-person class in your studio, um, send me an email, and, uh, and we'll see if we can arrange that Friday. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Bye, Michael Bean. Bye. Bye. Bye.